Good evening. Um, my name is Dilip Chak. I wanted to provide an overview of SAP purchasing core processes. I also wanted to give a quick introduction about myself and also my company. This is uh, my profile. I have uh, 15 years of experience in SAP implementation across the globe. In past 15 years, <coughs> I have done many implementations in US, Canada, Europe, India, and various other countries. I have worked with several companies. Some of the company I worked, I was uh, director with Capgemini. Before that, I was director with Accenture. And in the last, I worked with IBM. <coughs> as an associate partner. I also have a deep academic interest in that I've been teaching SAP. I have taught over 3,000 people in SAP SD, CRM, MM, and WM modules. I also visit various universities. I'm a visiting professor to Indiana University of Pennsylvania, where I take a three credit course. <coughs> I have been a faculty for various universities. I have been visiting the two various universities uh, in India, in the US, where I have been uh, talking on SAP and providing various lectures. Some of the functional uh, knowledge of SAP or some of the functional areas I focus on, some of the industries which I focus on. And these are some of the companies in India where I work. In the beginning of my career. Also wanted to give in a quick introduction of our Kavir. Um, we have two companies, Kavir Consulting and Kavir Infotech. Kavir Infotech is in India, Kavir Consulting is in the US. Primarily we do uh, three things. We provide consulting services. <coughs> in the consulting services we basically provide various uh, customer relations, various business processes, supply chain transformation, financial transformation. Second activity which we do is the technology services in which we do ERP implementations, various infrastructure services, various other application services. We also provide training. In that training services we basically provide corporate training, training for institutes, individual training. We are a company with 200 people working in it and uh, we also have a global offices. Uh, we have offices in uh, India, uh, in the US and delivery centers in those different countries. I want to talk to you about SAP purchasing. SAP purchasing is part of SAP MM module. In SAP MM module, we have a primary three core sub-modules in it. We have uh, external purchasing, inventory management, and invoice verification. Our focus for today's conversation is in SAP purchasing. I will be providing another presentation which focus on inventory management and also another presentation which will focus on advice verification. In SAP purchasing, there are primarily three core procurement processes. Procurement for a stock, procurement for consumable items, and procurement for services. These are the three core procurement processes. Let me talk about a typical procurement cycle. In typical procurement cycle for a stock items, we have this eight step process. Step number one, we determine requirement. In fact, SAP MM module, it starts with a, it starts with an event where there's somewhere there is a need for an item. That need is captured in the form of a purchase requisition. Means if you don't need any item, you don't need any material, any service to be procured, 
purchasing has nothing to do. Then we talk about uh, source determination, third part is vendor selection and the fourth is purchase order processing in which we create a purchase order. If needed, uh, purchase order processing or monitoring being conducted and the next is good receipt processing. We send a PO, vendor supply the product and we do good receipt and service receipt posting. After that is step number seven, we do invoice verification, we verify the invoice. The next one is payment processing, we pay to the vendor. In the typical procurement cycle, we have these eight steps. Determining requirement, finding the source with whom we should buy from, select the right vendor, <coughs> create a purchase order for that vendor, monitor the purchase orders, when vendor come back, they supply the product, we do good receipt in our system. And then we do invoice verification for verifying the invoice and the payment process. These are eight step process. Let me talk about procurement of a stock item. In the procurement of a stock item, these are the processing steps. It's a start with the purchasing, purchase requisition. Purchase requisition is a document which basically have document which collect the requirement, which has that, okay, this material is needed on this quantity, this date. After purchase requisition, is next one is source of supply. From that, we create RFQ, which is request for quotation. Then RFQ is given to one or more than one vendor. We give it to vendor A, vendor B, vendor C. After that, we give that RFQ or request for quotation to various vendors. We receive the quotation from them. And the one quotation which we accept, we convert that purchase requisition to purchase order. The one which you do not, we convert into a rejection order. Then we create a contract and also agreement if we want you to buy from this vendor for the long term. I want to talk to you about procurement of consumable items. So I just talked to you procurement of a stock item. A stock items are the item which you keep in a stock and subsequently consume them. Consumable item are the items which is normally the low value item which you do not keep in your stock, you buy and then you consume them immediately. Therefore, when you buy the consumable items, you procure direct for a account assignment object. You procure them for a specific cost object. These items are not managed in the inventory. Consumable items, for example, you're buying office stationery. For example, you're buying computer system. If you're buying office stationery, probably you will assign the cost to your cost center. Therefore, it's a consumable item. Computer system. If you're buying this item, that computer is your asset. And system automatically updates the consumption. So you know you can track that, okay, last year, how much item, how much office stationery item you purchased, how much uh, this kind of item you purchased, how much consume, we, you know, consume, uh, this kind of item, what was my consumption for this kind of item? So we can keep track of our consumption behavior and therefore there is a consumable items. Next one is account assignment object. Account assignment object basically tells me the cost object. That basically means the purpose for which you are buying the item. In account assignment cost, there are various cost uh, object or account assignment object. For example, you have an asset, you have a cost center, you have a project, you have a sales order, you have a production order. These are various cost objects. Cost objects are the recipient of the cost. If you buy an item, who finally get this cost assigned to? That is the various cost objects or account assignment objects. In SAP uh, purchasing, 
in order to facilitate consumable buying, we have something called blanket purchase order. Blanket purchase order is also called open PO, is also called miscellaneous PO, um, different terms. An open blanket PO is very is a function which is commonly used for uh, you know low value item. In the blanket purchase orders, we can use this purchase order. We can have a specific validity period. In this PO, you have a uh, you know this PO for a specific limit, and then for this purchase order, you can keep buying the invoice. And once this validity period is over. When this limit is over, this purchase order is over. That is example of blanket purchase order. Okay. In blanket purchase order, the next one is um, there is something called uh, this is a procurement cycle for the blanket purchase order. In that, uh, these are some of the steps in which you have a purchase requisition. Obviously, you always have a purchase requisition. You may or may not have RFQ or quotation. You may or may not have a contract and schedule agreement. But more than likely, you got always have a purchase order. When the business reference to purchase order, you might have, it may not have a good receipt process. Normally, in case of blanket purchase order, the step of good receipt and service entry sheet is not there. That step is not there. That is a good thing and some people also do not like it. So if we talk about in a blanket purchase or a process, a one thing which is very different, that is a good receipt process and service entry sheet step. This step is not there in this process. And obviously the next one is the invoice. Uh, and uh, in case of invoice, uh, that is a verifying the invoice of the vendor. So this is a typical blanket purchase order. Purchase requisition, uh, no RFQ, no contract, purchase order, no good receipt and service entry sheet. And we normally have a invoice process. So that is an example of blanket purchase order process. Next thing which I want to talk to you about is the procurement of services. And the procurement of services is basically buying service. Now, what is the example of service? Service like you want somebody to come and clean your window is a service. You want somebody to come and fix your fax machine, service. You want somebody to come and do the painting on your wall, is a service. In that case, you're not buying item, but you're buying services. And service provider is providing those services to your company. That is where the service management uh, service cycle come into the picture. In service cycle, this is the process step in which you, have a, you create a service record, you determine the source, you select the right vendor, you do invite the bid, means if uh, you do not know who your service provider is, you can basically do a bid invitation or RFQ for that. And uh, another person, another function which you do, maintain and compare your quotation, then after you've got the right quotation, you create a purchase order. You send that purchase order uh, to to the uh, to your to your service provider. In this case, uh, the vendor. You do purchase order monitoring that uh, whether the service has been provided or not provided. Another function is service entry. Once the service has been performed. You call somebody to clean the windows. If he has cleaned the window he will do the service entry. Service acceptance is a service approval. That basically means somebody has to approve that yes, that service has been provided. And then the next one is invoice verification. After your vendor has provided the service to you, you verify the invoice and then you make payment to the service provided to the vendor. This is a typical service cycle. In the service cycle, uh, uh, as we have a material master record, in SAP we also have a service master record. Service master record is master data for creating service. Service 
is obviously used in procurement process. Service can also be used in project system module. Service can also be used in plant maintenance module. And that is what I wanted to talk to you. So thank you so much for your time. If you have any question, you can always email me at this email ID, dilip at kabeerconsulting.com. Thank you so much. You guys have a nice evening. Talk to you. Bye.